everybody. Come on, let's do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Turn to your neighbor, ask him, was that the best you could do? Come on, let's try it one more time. Grab your neighbor's hand, if you will. My neighbor. Such an honor to be here today um, with Bishop Bart, First Lady Coralie, and to all the pastors that are here, those that I've seen for the second time in my life. Good to see you all today. I'm excited about being here. overwhelmingly excited about today, but I remember the last time we were together, the evening service was where God really That's it. did some significant things That's for it. us. I want you to prepare yourself for today to be the launching pad and this evening to be the destination where we are going to see some things that God has in store for us. I've not come just to talk about God this morning. I've come to speak for him. Come on, Amen. come on. Come to tell you what he told me to tell you. Uh, that you might not just look forward to the year 2020 as a new year, but I want you to be aware that God is launching a new decade in your life that what I'm going to tell you today will be the overriding character of the next 10 years of your life. My God. That you are entering a time uh, of vision, mm -hmm. a time of imagination, mm -hmm. Come on. and a time of the open mouth. Yes. You will begin to declare things over your life. Come on, there it is. Over the lives of others. Yes. Yes. Come on now. Ooh. Break it open, break it open. Ah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless his wonderful. Jeremiah says, I will put my words in your mouth. And then he says, I'll hasten them to come to pass. God's going to get in a hurry in the next 10 years. He's going to do something profound in 2020, which will set the tone for the next nine after that. Your testimony is going to be very significant. When you go into a court of law, an attorney finds himself up against a tough judge. The good attorney will start quoting precedent, and that precedent will sway the judge's opinion. He'll move because the precedent has been spoken to him. What that means to us is that the testimony you release sets a precedent in the kingdom of God. Simply means what he did before, he'll do again. You didn't hear what I said. What he did before, he's going to do again. I don't know how long it's been for you, but if he did it for you before, He's going to do it for you again. Somebody needs to shout hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. God, I bless your name now for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. I understand this day is no accident, but it's a day that you have ordained for all of us. That means we've survived some seasons, some good times, and some bad times because your word gave us guarantee we would be here today. 
I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. For every born-again believer that is in this place, for everyone that might be watching us around the world by stream, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would release your spirit in this place, that you would cause us to feel you like we never felt you before. Send us a word today that will show us what you're going to do. Thank you for the battles that we fought. Thank you for the evidence of warfare that we have in our midst. But also thank you for every victory you promised us. I give your name praise right now. I pray for those that don't know you this morning. That by the end of this service, they'll say yes. I pray for those that know you but walked away from you. By the end of this service, they're coming back. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, open our minds, open our hearts. Allow us to hear, see, and receive what you're about to say. Now, Lord, please make me look like I know what I'm doing one more time. I thank you in advance. Open all of our hearts. Open all of our minds. Holy Spirit, sweep through this place. Sit on everyone here like fire. Help us to take our spiritual shoes off because we're standing on holy ground. Dear God. Send the wind of your presence right now. Sweep through this house one more time. Hallelujah! Heal, set free, and deliver. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, can you uh, turn to Matthew chapter 16? We're going to take an unfamiliar look at a very familiar text. I will uh, attempt not to be long. Um, I don't see any clock telling me what I need to do, so I'll trust the Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, <laughs> Pastor has allowed me to bring a few things. Um, briefly, my books are there. Uh, series on warfare is there. Series called Let's Get Naked is there. <laughs> One called Fences. One uh, around the theme of the Black Panther movie. And all of those come with a free gift that you would want. Amen. Because you know preachers give away gifts that you don't want. But those are gifts that I could get something from that I'm giving to you. So if you purchase something, um, we'll give you a free gift that you would like to have. So good to see the pastor from New Jersey. Praise the Lord. It's not called the Garden State for nothing. It's where God lives. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Come on. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I tell my Ghanaian pastors he moved from Ghana a couple years ago. And now he resides permanently in New Jersey. He visits everywhere else, but he makes his home in New Jersey. Jesus, 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 there is something about your name, Master, Master. Savior, oh, come on now. Jesus, like a fragrance after 
the rain. Oh, ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about your name. Matthew 16. Verse 16 says, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. For I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Focusing on verse 18, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock here we come, I will build my church. Here it is. And the gates, mm -hmm. the plans, the strategies of hell shall not prevail against it. Look at your neighbor and say, if we're going to fight, wait a minute, start over again. If we're going to fight, we might as well win. Somebody shout, we win. We win. I don't know if you know it or not, but the church is in a battle whether you want to participate or not. The problem that most of us have as believers and also that we have in the modern day church is that we're fighting a battle in two dimensions. Paul puts it so eloquently, he says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to or after the flesh. In other words, every time you find yourself in a battle, there has to be a physical manifestation, but also there will be a spiritual cause because of it. The battle is for both the spiritual and the physical lives of all the people that the church has been assigned to save. Thank you, Lord. We are after people, both physically and spiritually. So we must understand this is actually the house of God. Uh, we've got to understand this is the place where Jehovah is most comfortable. You need to understand it. The provider, the restorer, and the defender, his presence dwells obviously in his church. There is a spiritual shift represented when you enter the property that we sit upon. If you're a discerning person in the spirit, you're not just coming to a building, but you're coming into all the possibilities of the presence of God. You need to understand, God tells Moses, when you come in here, there must be a shift in who you think you are. All our titles must drop. We must understand we have not just entered any old kind of building. This is holy ground. This is the place where God has placed his name. Everybody in here is reduced in status when we come in here. 
We're stepping on the property. This is a, an, in a, an innovation. This is a place where God invites us to worship, to shift from who we are into who he desires us to be. It is a place where we ought to be more discerning, more sensitive to the things of God, to the spirit of God, and to the word of God. You come into God's house when you walked into the sanctuary. You stepped into all that God could possibly do for you amen. is present in this place this morning. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Unlike the tabernacle, we don't have to go through apartments and barriers. We can come boldly to the throne of grace in our time of need. We have no barriers. We have no restrictions. We can move in with confidence. Because grace has opened the doors to us. So the church is a dimension of the supernatural. I need to get that into your spirit. If you walk in this place and think you're just coming to another worship service, no, you're stepping into a place that represents a shift into the supernatural. So everything in the kingdom, everything in the spirit is available to us every time we walk in. I'm not getting any help. That when you sat down today, you didn't sit down in just a building. You sat down in something that is both physical and spiritual at the same time. This is where the body of Christ meets. This is what God calls the church. And if the church is the body of Christ, then it has to be both physical and spiritual at the same time. I hope I'm making sense already. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this video sharpens and encourages you to be all that God has called you to be. You can give online at rockcitychurch.com or on the Rock City Church app. Like and share us on social media at RockCC Baltimore. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode or live stream.